right. Jesus, I ask you to move by your spirit today. I'm not sure how this is all going to come out, Lord, but it is up to you to deliver the message. This one is definitely beyond me. <laughs> and so, Lord, I'm going to ask you, Jesus, to move by your spirit, fill my mouth, give me the scriptures, help me to find the references, and help me to be able to speak from your heart. Help me to be able to do what it is you want done. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as the song goes, as we listened in uh, earlier today, uh, I'm going to paint me a picture. I'm going to paint a picture of Jesus. Well, I'm not going to quite go that way. This one's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to paint a different picture. I'm going to see if I can't picture, paint a picture of a different story. It's tied to Christ. Trust me. <coughs> so to start off with, as I was out on my usual prayer walk, I was struck. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> In my throat, it's here. I was praying for Presence Fellowship. And the prayer actually took a twist that I was not prepared for. And it was uh, a very interesting experience. So what you're going to get is both probably some of that and the scenes that, and some of the scenes, hopefully, and what I've got for an exhortation here. Turn with me to Ezekiel 37. In Ezekiel 37, it's a well-known verse that there are a lot of some ministers turn to. And I realized as I was reading it that there's a qualifier on why things went the way they went. Picture this. Close your eyes and think, or picture this. You're in the area of the Middle East. It is dry. There's no water. It is barren land. It is deserty. There are various types of plants that survive the desert. And you have various both good and bad animals running across the land both day and night. And at night it is very, very cold, very chilly. It gets down to freezing level. And in the day it is hot. We complain here in Seattle when it gets above 80. <laughs> We're talking temperatures in the 120s, maybe the 130s. So need to say there is very, very little moisture in this land. And during this time of, that we're going to go into Ezekiel, <coughs> Israel has been in captivity in Babylon, where we have seen the scenes of Iraq and Iran, where it is very dry, and yes, they have some palm trees, and yes, they have some cultural things, and yes, it is a different era, it is a different setting than what Israel is used to. And so we'll start off with Ezekiel, who's been prophesying all this time to various nations, to Israel, to all sorts of things. And here we come back, Ezekiel 37. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. Having the scene painted before you, this is a very dry valley. 
and the bones are bleached. They've been there for a long time. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there was very many in the open valley, and lo, there were very, they were very dry. Okay, I thought it was just one set of bones. We're finding out that we have an army that has been defeated and left to rot in the valley. It was an army which we'll later find of Israel at one point in time. <clears throat> and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Now there's a question. What do you believe? I was struck with a question not too long ago, which someone is tied to this, but <clears throat> it was a challenging question for me. And the question was, what is the one thing that you would like to have the Lord do for you, and what is the one thing you would like to do for Him? Sum it all up. Boil it all down. What is the one thing that you would like to have the Lord do for you? And sum it all up and boil it all down. What would you like to have the what would you like to do for the Lord? Now which I took on the challenge and realized I got half of it right. Still working on the first half. <laughs> Even though I did send an answer, which is close. What do you believe? <clears throat> oh, son of man. I can just see it. God having the talk of his son. Sitting up on the top of the valley. Now that you've walked through and you've seen all these dry bones. And you see how bad a shape things are. And you see that there are these, these, these are definitely dead men. There's no two ways about it. We can't get out of it. It's they are dead. Nothing we can do. There is no potential of life here. And yet scientists today have been able to find that by taking little pieces of bone, they can still find DNA. In fact, what was interesting to me was that they actually found a grave of a... Uh, they were trying to prove the story about um, Amazon women. And so they took a DNA sample off this set of bones and to their surprise they were actually able to trace the history of this woman all the way to this little girl who, this blonde girl over in Siberia that she is part of, because of her DNA, is part of the lineage of this princess. Of this princess, didn't even know that I had a heritage of a princess. But to think that you know, here we are in science today. We can actually take a sample of a bone, get the DNA off of it, which I thought this was dead. I mean, it's it's a dry bone. It's been buried. It's been covered. It's, it's been out in the sun. It's been bleached. How could you get any form of life off of it? So, what do you believe? Ezekiel at least had the right answer. And I answered, Oh, Lord God, thou knowest. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. I don't even know. You asked me the question if these bones can live, and I'm one part of me from my natural sight says, No way, Jose. And yeah, if you ask the question, I kind of get this impression that something's about to happen here, and I'm 
will end up sticking my foot in my mouth. So I'm going to take the safe route. Thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Okay. Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Just stop there. <clears throat> Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye hear, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Dry bones. Can they hear? Hear ye the word of the Lord. I was thinking about Presence Fellowship. And it's like, well, we're alive. She's alive. But I don't get it. Why is she not doing anything? Why is she not going anywhere? What's what's holding her back? What's keeping her from moving forward? What's happening with Presence Fellowship? Why is it that she's she's alive, but what's going on? And it dawned on me as I read this verse. O dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord had to be spoken to the bones first before it came together. The word of the Lord had to be spoken before it was risen. And so, I was going, okay, Lord, we have been getting a lot of word. There's no no problem with that. We've been getting a lot of word. Then he said unto me, Then saith the Lord, Unto these be bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to flip over to Genesis here real quick. And we see there's at least apparently a couple times where God breathed, or at least God breathed one, twice. And he said in Genesis, what did I say? Two. And the Lord God formed a man, formed man of dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils like breath of life and the man became a living soul. And it was like, Lord, this is what we need. Breathe life. Thus saith the Lord unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And we see in John 20.22, where it says, And when he had said this, we'll back up a couple verses here, Then Jesus said unto, him, unto them again, Peace be unto you, and you have to understand, he's risen from the dead. He's met with Thomas. Thomas stuck his hand in the side of Christ and finally was convinced, okay, this is the Lord. Then, then said Jesus unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So we see in Genesis, the beginning of man, breath coming upon man. We see in Ezekiel, after Israel has been defeated, taken away, hauled off to, the, to some other country, 
and an army has been defeated, breath coming unto a man, unto an army. We then see in, in, in John a progression. Not only do you get breath to have life, but now you get breath to have the Holy Ghost. So we can have God in us and dwelling in us. I will lay sinew upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath that I am in the Lord. Oh, breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. This is interesting. You think about this. I'm going to put muscle and I'm going to put flesh on you and I'm going to breathe on you and you are going to know that I am the Lord. Kind of coincides with my previous message which are ye are nothing without me. Ye are nothing. You can do nothing. Ye are nothing without me. See, I have been paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> it's been hard. And so Ezekiel said, All right, Lord, here we go. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, and bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, sinew and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them ab above, but there was no breath in them. So Lord started a movement. The earth shook. The bones began to rattle. They started coming together and behold, you had the framework of a man, of many men. <coughs> then you start seeing the scenes of sinew and flesh, muscle and flesh coming upon you. I mean, this would be a great movie. <coughs> <laughs> the man's coming together. <coughs> Except for he lacked one thing. He lacked breath. And so, we have a body now. We have a body of believers. Bones are being joined together. Flesh is being put, and muscle are being put on the, body, the framework to keep the body together. But it's still not alive yet. It's still not alive yet. And so I started saying, Okay, Lord, in reference to Presence Fellowship, we need life. We need life. We've got your word. We understand your word. We hear your word. We try to implement your word. Um, but we're still short. <coughs> We need life. We need life. And then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come, unto the, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Now, with Adam, God breathed upon the nostrils of Adam and, and Eve. Now, it doesn't say anything about God breathing upon Eve, but that's my only sub-conclusion, that she became alive. He had to breathe on her, cause her to have life. Because he, life and death are in his hands. <coughs> and so, therefore... He had to breathe upon Eve, just as much as he had to breathe on Adam, and he breathed on Adam through his nostrils. He provided, he performed CPR. You know, 
So just realize that we're all living under CPR because without it we wouldn't be alive. <laughs> And then we see in Jesus, we go to the other extreme, where he breathed, he blew upon the disciples. He probably went to every one of them, receive you the Holy Ghost. Receive you the Holy Ghost. Peter, John, Matthew, Luke, Mark, all the disciples receive you the Holy Ghost. Okay, that was a nice experiment. Little did they know, 50 days later, we had fire. <laughs> It became very, very hot. So I prophesied as commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. He breathed upon them. This time the Lord used the four winds. He didn't go individually. He just brought in the four winds, says, Here, have some air. And lo and behold, stood a mighty army. Stood a mighty army. An army of warriors. An army of men and women who were able to Say, okay, you beat us once, but this time, of course, we tried to do it in our own strength last time, and look what it got us. This time we know it is you, because he said, and ye shall know I am the Lord. just got done saying earlier, I will lay sin you upon you, will bring upon flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So this time they woke up and went like, okay, it is God who brought us together. It is God who has breathed upon us. It is God who has done the work. We can do nothing. It is him who will receive all the glory. And the thing I begin to see in Presence Fellowship as I started saying, Okay, Lord, breathe upon her. She needs life. We've got the word. She needs life. Breathe upon her with your spirit. Breathe upon her. Cause her to come alive. And as I did that, I began to see this woman arise. She began to arise off her bed and stand up as a woman of war. This woman was was definitely... I would not say she was decked out for a wedding. She was decked out for war. Yep. It's not quite what you would see in the operas. That was the first thing I was given was that is not the scene. <coughs> Very attractive lady, but definitely full war. What's interesting to me is that you see in Song of Solomon the bride. We'll flip back there for just a second. 
I need to figure out where Song of Solomon was at. It's before he it's after Ecclesiastes. The other book. Okay. In Ecclesiastes six ten, who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? Who is she? Who is this woman that looketh forth as a morning, fair as the sun, clear as the sun? Clear, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. And then there's this plea. Return, return, O Shulamite, return, that we may look upon thee. What will we, what will we see in the Shulamite? As it were, the company of two, army, of two armies. Come back. We want to look at you. No, I have things to do, places to go, and a battle to fight. Either come with me, or stay behind. A lot of people have been trying to call and say, Return! Return to the religious system! Return to the old ways. Return to those things that were comfortable. We have the plan. Can we look upon you? I mean, you really look nice. But a banner of armies... What caused this great death? He explained it in verse 11. He says, Then said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We were cut off for our parts. <coughs> Now, when I saw this initially, it was kind of like, that explains some things. They lost hope. They became discouraged. And they became dried up. Probably internally first. Because, as the old saying goes, you know, we baptize, we dunk you in water as an outward manifestation of an inward heart. That's usually what we tell. If you if you really are a Christian, you believe Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, you need to get baptized in water by immersion, which is putting down the old man, rising the new man up, which is usually termed as you know, we've called it, it's an outward sign of an inward heart. You're willing to obey the Lord. You're willing to do that, what He wants you to do. And this is a commandment. He wants us to be baptized. Now, what's interesting is that the infilling of the Holy Ghost is the seal of approval. Okay? Your heart is saying, I'm willing to do what you want. I acknowledge that, so therefore I'm going to fill you with my, Holy, with my Holy Ghost, which your outward manifestation is speaking in tongues. You now have a direct line. Use it wisely. <coughs> we, do, we do take uh, visitation calls. If you just want to show up and say hi, we appreciate that. Because I know, I mean, any father... I just got done talking to my brother not too long ago, and he says, no, it was really good to see my son. He came over and saw me. Any father is willing to, you know, 
have a, receive a phone call or a visitation from his son. How much more wouldn't our Father, our Heavenly Father? Call home. Let me know what's going on. I was challenged with something this week. I went to a a uh, barbecue dinner. A friend had, had encouraged me to go. And I had an old saying rewritten. And it was one of those things where, you know, I kind of, you know, it's one of those sayings that a lot of Christians would tell you. And there is, there seems to be just enough half truth that you can sink your teeth into it. But the end result is really not absolute total life. And it's the old saying that says, God helps those who help themselves. How many of us bid into that one? Yeah, God helps those who help themselves. Bless the name of the Lord. So get out there, do your research, do your work, blah, blah, blah. And there is a half truth. Because it does say that we're supposed to seek after wisdom, we're supposed to seek after knowledge, we're supposed to seek after understanding. But the Lord is the one that gives the understanding. We're supposed to seek certain things. This is true. We're supposed to seek the gifts of the Spirit. We're supposed to seek Him. Seek me, the Lord says. Well, that got rewritten. And I think it makes more sense. God helps those who lean on Him. See, before, it's your own flesh. Look what I have done. Because, I mean, the Lord rebuked Israel. Well, I didn't. I shouldn't say that. He warned Israel in Deuteronomy. He said, Now, when you get wealth, just remember who gave it to you. Don't say that my hands have brought me this. Just remember who gave it to you. So the Lord helps those who lean upon Him. And this is where the, this is why it's so interesting in Solomon, is that who is this that leaneth upon her beloved? Because she knows that she cannot do it in her own strength. Now, unfortunately, I can't find the verse right off the top of my head here, but the point being is, here she is coming back to the castle, back to Jerusalem, according to the play, with her beloved, King Solomon. And who is this that leaneth upon her beloved? You see, he's the one that made the way for her. We see in several instances in Song of Solomon where he tries to unlock the door. I shouldn't try. He unlocks the door. It's up to her to come to him. We see where he, she goes after him. She searches for him. And this is where the army of the Lord that's currently in the Valley of Dry Bones is going to be doing. We know that it is the Lord that is doing it. So therefore, we will seek him in the morning. We will seek him in the evening. We will know where our strength lies from. I can do nothing except by him. And therefore, we know that he will make the provisions. We know that he will take care of us. And so it's a test. What do you believe, O Ezekiel? O men and women of God, what do you believe? Do you believe that he is the Lord God that provideth for thee? Do you believe that he is the Lord God that heals thee? Do you believe that he is the one that will meet every need according to his riches and glory? Do you believe that he is the one that will set you free from all your enemies? Do you believe that he is the one that will go before you and beat your buckler and beat your shield? Do you believe that he is the one that will make a way for you? Do you believe that he is the one that will give you the, the wisdom and the knowledge when you ask for it? What do you believe? Like my pastor graciously said one time, we get tested according to our belief. 
what do you believe? Like someone made a comment, yes, there are times when we have to pull down strongholds because they're blocking us from what we have, what we want, and what we need. So therefore, as we go on, therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into, into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And ye shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. And then shall ye know that I am the Lord, have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord. Now that's interesting. Because there are several times when the Lord has said, when Israel has been beaten down, trodden under, almost annihilated, by the way, I know what you're going through. You are so dead, you've been buried. You've been trodden down so much, you are buried. But have I got a deal for you? <laughs> have I got a deal for you? I am going to <coughs> open your graves and cause you to come alive. I know hope was taken from you. I know that every promise was given to you was taken from you. I know that everything that you had was destroyed. I know that everything that you were given was stolen from you because there's an enemy that steals, kills, and destroys. But I, and he's actually gone to the point of burying you doesn't matter what the subject is. Buried in debt? Buried in work? Buried in, you name it, in life? I, sh you shall know. Again, we know that we can do nothing. Ye shall know that I am the Lord. Number one. All my people. And I shall put my spirit in you. Now. Breathe. Presence Fellowship. Breathe. Inhale. Inhale. I shall put my spirit upon you. And I shall place you in your own land. <laughs> now that's a promise that's been given to Israel throughout time. I mean, all i got to do is flip to Isaiah. Just for a side note here. Just to prove my point. I think it's uh, Isaiah. Is it 51? Nope. 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the, unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and opening of the prisons to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. And the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. 
and they shall build the old waste places, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities and desolations, and guess what? You get your own land. So back to Ezekiel here. Then shall you know. Then shall you know. It's not until then. But then shall you know that I, the Lord, have not only spoken it, but performed it. I've spoken this into your life, and I will perform it. O oh, Presence Fellowship, life, the breath of life, the moving of his spirit shall raise thee up and cause thee to go out like a warrior ready for war and to do battle and defeat the enemy this time instead of being trodden under. O oh, Israel, O oh, church, you will rise. Right now we're in the process of shaking the bones. We're bringing the bones together to have a structure so that I can then put on sinew, muscle, to kind of keep the bones together and flesh to be the outward covering so that people don't run in fear. <laughs> I mean, we've all seen the horror movies. can't have you scaring the people, though you will be terrible, a sight to behold in front of the enemy. But for those who are looking for salvation, for those that are looking for high help, for those who are looking for healing, you'll bring comfort and joy. They did an article not too long ago. I remember seeing it on a show, and I think it was over Veterans Day weekend, where there, everybody was, you know, doing these big shows about, you know, uh, how we should honor our vets. And this one article intri intrigued me as I was watching it. The usual story about the United States is how horrible we did things, because. Your nation came in, and you destroyed, and you did this, and you did that, and how bad you are. <clears throat> These people actually were able to gather testimonies. I found it rather intriguing. Like, how come the press never preaches this? Yeah. Why can't they? Why can't they show this? Why do we always have to be the bad guys? Why is it the church is always called the bad guy? Everybody else does wicked and horrible things. and Oh, they're the good guys. Definitely a state of affairs where, you know, what was the scripture where it says, light shall become dark and dark shall become light? Boy, are we duped. But in this article, they're saying that they gathered these testimonies. And they went to, starting out with Germany, during World War II. And, they, and these people were saying, the American people do not understand what your men have done for us. They freed us from a tirade. Tyrant, excuse me. Thank you. They freed us from a tyrant. They helped us to be able to reestablish our country and give us actually a better form of living than what we had before. Yes. They went 
to Korea. You don't understand what the American people have done for us. They have protected us. They have kept us. They have offered us life. Given us opportunities that we're watching what happened in North Korea. They spared us from a from a um, we call it, um, dictatorship. In Vietnam considered one of the worst wars between that and Korea, the worst wars we ever got into. And the people said, ah, yes, the Americans were forced out. But, they gave us a vision and hope for the future. Okay, we may have not been able to beat the North, Korea, North Vietnamese. But we have a vision and hope. The Americans gave us a vision and hope. They gave us a dream. And that dream is starting to take place within Vietnam. We couldn't beat the Vietnamese army. But now all of a sudden the Viet Cong is being forced to face off with capitalism and hope. And, and we, we, we don't know what to do with this. It's become a, quote, a good cancer within the country mm -hmm. that is starting to turn things upside down. You don't understand what the Americans have done for us in Iraq and Afghanistan. We're starting to wise up to the fact it's not our people that are killing us. It's the outsiders that are starting that are killing us. The Americans have brought hope. The coalition has brought strength. They have brought freedom from a tyrant. They've helped us. They've brought life. Oh, you don't understand. Church We don't see, yes, there's all sorts of religions that promise life and liberty and a pursuit of happiness. But it's all bound by laws. You got to do this, you got to do that. You got to walk this way, you got to duck this way. And yes, we have some of our own. But you're the one that brings healing. You're the one that brings deliverance. You're the one that sets the captives free. You're the one that, when the righteous are in place in a city, the city rejoices. O oh Israel, O oh Bride of Christ, O oh Presence Fellowship, begin to rise. Jesus, we thank you for this word. I pray that you bless it, strengthen us, and help us to fulfill what you really have in store for us, that we may be that warrior, that woman that you want, that is submitted unto you, <coughs> committed unto you, and willing to do your will. For we can do nothing. In Jesus' name, amen.